we can uh, now officially start our discussion and I would like to begin with you, Your Excellency, the Ambassador, Mr. Xiao Chun Chek. And I would like, I, I heard your previous discussion with my colleague, Mrs. Kunalaki, and I would like to further on, on, the, on the topics covered there. As far as I know, and I've been following closely, Greece is still committed to being a gateway for the cooperation between Eastern Asia and Europe. Uh, naturally, I mean, like the natural position, geographical position, and as a, as a uh, commitment. What kind of role can China play in this regard? I mean, the prospects of the potential of the Greece-China economic cooperation, can, can it go beyond an investment in Piraeus or an energy distributor? Or how, how do you see this thing expanding? Okay. Uh, the Belt and the Road Initiative is highly compatible with Greece's strategy of becoming an international freight center and a logistic hub. So the, the, the Pirates Port project can give full play to the advantages of Greece in its location and the shipping capacity. So and the China-Europe Land Sea Express Line, which starts from uh, uh, Paris and extends northward to the, uh, uh, to the Hungary and Serbia uh, sub, uh, railways, has become the third major trade channel between China and Europe, and between the Eastern Asian countries and Europe which covering nine countries in Central and Eastern Europe and uh, total population of 71 million. All of this will help Greece become a gateway for Eastern Asian countries to enter into Europe, into European market, uh, facilitate the Balkan countries integration in the Europe too. And we'll also strongly promote uh, the cooperation between China and the Central and the Eastern European countries. So uh, despite the difficulties caused by the pandemic, China, Greece economic and trade cooperation is cleaving through waves. In 2021, the bilateral trade volume increased by 44% compared with 2019. Despite the pandemic. Yeah, before the COVID-19 pandemic. Reach, reaching 12.2 uh, billion US dollars. So uh, exceeding uh, 10 billion US dollars for the first time in the past you know, 50 years. So according to the statistics uh, of the Greek side, over the decades since the debt crisis, net foreign direct investment inflows from, chi from China, of course, uh, including Hong Kong, uh, totaled nearly 2.2 billion euros. And China is Greece's largest source of foreign investment outside of Europe. During the pandemic, uh, the two countries continued to s consolidate the momentum of uh, cooperation in the fields of economic and trade, information and uh, communication, finance, etc. While striving to expand bilateral cooperation to the emerging fields such as green and digital economy, uh, technological innovation, and service industries, so on. Thank you. Uh, I will return in a moment uh, about this green and digital uh, global revolution and how China and Greece can work together. But I would like to go to the other side of our company, to Mr. 
uh, Yannis Mirlis, the Secretary General of uh, for International Economic and Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and ask him the same question, more or less. What kind of cooperation do you see evolving? What investments would you like to see? We heard the ambassador uh, speaking of a big stock of foreign direct investment. Costco, obviously, is, I guess, about half of it. Um, but what is the, the, the position of, of the Greek uh, state? Thank you very much. You know that the, the tradition of the two countries is coming from really long back away, so uh, it was important that uh, the last 15 years we invested together on uh, how we can uh, increase our, our, our trade volume, and uh, as the ambassador said, uh, is working. Even during the pandemic, uh, we saw uh, the numbers to raise. Of course, Costco is an important, a really important investment of China and Greece, and uh, it's not the only one. And uh, I, I must say that uh, now that uh, this government is creating, even in these difficult uh, times, is creating uh, all the framework in order to easily invest in Greece. And uh, uh, Greece is one of the most popular invest investment destinations uh, in Europe. I must tell you that uh, the last year, uh, we counted China as uh, the 10th uh, investor country uh, of Greece, which means that uh, we're working uh, really well together. And I must say this publicly, that we have a good cooperation with the embassy of China and the ambassador himself in, uh, in Greece. Uh, and uh, it, it is important also, and we're discussing about this, uh, to bring also industrial investments, to bring uh, assembly units, to, to, to take advantage of uh, uh, the, ge the geostrategic position of Greece, because Greece is in the middle of three continents. As you said, we have the role to connect uh, Asia with Europe. But more than this, uh, when you have something being assembled in, uh, in Greece, it is made in EU, which means that the EU market is easily uh, to take advantage of the EU market. But more, more than this, we are in the middle of three more continents. We have the Balkan region, we have the north of Africa, we have Middle East, so we have everything that is in between Greece and China from the other side of Europe. So uh, I think that uh, we should search a little bit more, we should work even more in order to bring more investments, but we should keep that even in the difficult times, the cooperation is so strong and the, the bonds are so strong that uh, it, it doesn't affect actually the relations. And also the same happens with trade, uh, with the uh, exports of Greece, where even that we have two totally different systems, which is the European one and the Chinese one, we're working in order to uh, go Without further bureaucracy with the bureaucracy issues and to, uh, to solve problems in order the Greek products, quality Greek products that we know that the Chinese want to have, uh, will be easily in the, in the Chinese market. This is not an easy target, but uh, we have really progress even on that. And this is maybe the, the most optimistic part of the discussion, because the investment is a different story. But the trade is more difficult, and uh, the rules cannot change in both sides. So uh, the solutions that we find together are really important and can be a guideline, a pilot also, of the, uh, of the cooperation between EU in general with China. I'm sure that our Chinese friends have learned a lot about Greek red tape and bureaucracy also from their experience in uh, uh, in Greece. Um, I'm building up here the questions and I think we will end at the conclusion very nicely. I would like now to turn to the executive president of Piraeus Sport Authority, uh, Mr. Yu Zengang, to go to the specific. Oh, obviously, Costco's investment at Piraeus is a flagship project. Uh, I would guess not only for Greece-Chinese relations, but overall an international flagship project. And obviously, it's where the Belt and Road, the maritime Belt and Road, uh, ends. But what are the main success drivers so far? You've been, you've been in Piraeus for more than 10 years, if we count the Piraeus container terminal on Pier 2 and Pier 3, and more than five years now in uh, the actual port authority. So what are the main success drivers and key factors for this success, and how do you see the cooperation developing in the future. Thank you. I just like the, our mediator told that uh, since the Costco shipping take over the Pilius port in 2010, 
for the container segment and also since the 2016 because cruise shipping take over the ports of the pilots and under the operation and the management of this port we take a very big development for all fields of the ports business such as uh, cruiser terminals, container terminals, ferry terminals, ship repairing segment and uh, right now for the container uh, business we are almost uh, in the ranking of the 29th uh, levels in whole of the world in 2021 but back to the 10 years before in 2010 the ports of the periods for the container business is only in the 93 levels so I think uh, this we have a great achievement for the container harbors uh, secondly, that the port of Pilos is already becoming the busiest uh, port for the cruiser for container harbors and also for the harbors of the logistic, which is going to the uh, east and the middle Europe and also for the uh, Balkan areas. So back to the 2010, at that time, uh, Costco Shipping made the bidding to get the tenders of the container business even at that time that uh, because of the uh, Greek economic status that uh, no one to make the biddings for this but Costco shipping to take over this and uh, also to make the developer of it so afterwards Costco shipping to make a great uh, uh, investment for the container business and also for the other items for the ports of the periods. Totally, we take about, uh, we put about uh, one billion of the euros during these uh, 12 years for the investment and uh, to make the infrastructure of all of the ports, especially for the container business. So right now that the ports of periods can create about 3,000 jobs for our direct laborers in which is working every day in the ports of Pirios and also create about 10,000 jobs which is relating to the port service. So we think right now the ports of Pirios is already becoming the one of the main harbors and also transship harbors for all of these uh, Mediterranean and also for the East and the South Europe and the Balkans and uh, these ports is already to be the transship harbors which is the very nearly straight to the Swiss port. So from now on we just like the others mentioned that we, we will put these ports of periods to be the more environmental green port and also with some digital digital renovations for these ports. I think this is the which we are get during this uh, 12 years and also for our future plans. Would, the, would I be correct to assume that once we've cleared recent hurdles um, that the Greek government uh, has said that are of technical nature and they will be resolved quickly, you will resume investments? Yes. I will be correct. Thank you. Uh, I will now turn to Ms. Li Ping, the country head of Bank of China, and I would like to ask you um, what kind of role can Chinese financial institution play in the development of the Greek-Chinese economic um, relation? Obviously, you have, a, if I remember correctly, you have financed a big part of investments of uh, Costco shipping in Piraeus. I think you're also uh, 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 contributing to IPTO financing and from what I remember also shipping and shipbuilding. So would you like to expand on, on this? Okay, yeah, thank you. The Chinese financial institution, institutions such as Bank of China uh, would like to contribute to uh, the establishment of business and relationship of Greece and China. Uh, under the Belt and Road Initiative, 
just like the ambassador said just now, yeah, mm, the Chinese bank, especially the main Chinese banks, would like to uh, facilitate the cross-border business between Greece and China. Uh, I just take Bank of China as an example. Uh, bank of China is the most globalized and integrated bank uh, among all Chinese banks. And our history is the longest history. We have this year is our 100 years anniversary. Yeah. Uh, and mm, we have extensive uh, global network. And we can use our network to support the companies worldwide. Especially in Greece, Bank of China Assets Branch established in 2019. And we are an affiliate of Bank of China Europe. Bank of China Europe, located in Luxembourg, and they have already been in Luxembourg for more than 40 years. And they have sufficient experience in the European market. And nowadays, Bank of China has um, 15 branches across 15 countries in EU countries here. Uh, Athens branch is a new one. Uh, and we focus ourselves on the Greek market. Uh, and we, our mainly target, our mainly role is uh, the following three uh, points. Firstly, is we support the local Greek companies develop the local business here. Of course, local business and international business as well. We cooperate closely to the financial institutions, the Greek financial institutions, uh, and develop the Greek business to promote the economic and finance increase here. Uh, yeah, this is the first one. And then second one, um, yeah, of course, Bank of China, we support the Chinese going global companies invest in Greece, and yet yeah, such as Pierre's part, and then uh, a lot of Chinese companies they are interested in invest in Greece, mm -hmm. so we can help them to invest here, and then to help them to develop their business and uh, increase their development here. Uh, thirdly, uh, Bank of China uh, create a platform uh, for matchmaking. And yeah, just now I just said uh, Bank of China has global network. By using our network, we support the Greek companies to find their Chinese partners inside China. Mm -hmm. This is Bank of China. We have our own brand, matchmaking brand, Bank, Bank of China matchmaking. Uh, yeah. And then uh, Bank of China has more than, I think, millions of corporate clients inside China. And we help the Greek companies to find their partners. And meanwhile, we help the Chinese companies to invest here, to find potential investors here. The, yeah. And I think in the future, Bank of China would like to be a platform and bridge to help the bilateral relationship to help the bilateral um, business, to help the bilateral uh, investment in great, both for Greece and China. This matchmaking function that you just described, how long have you uh, launched it in Greece? Is it a thing of the past two years or recent? Yeah, just, uh, yeah, we registered in 2019, uh, November, yeah, and then we started our business uh, in 2020, March. Yeah. It, is, it is very interesting because this is a point of, this is the kind of, of help that many Greek companies and Chinese companies that use would like to see, not only the financing, which obviously is very important. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I should return to you now, uh, Your Excellency. You spoke earlier about digital and green projects and innovation. We have, a, for the size of our economy, a very considerable sum of money from the European Resilience and Recovery Fund. About two-thirds of those, of those monies are um, uh, earmarked for uh, digital and green projects. Do you see any way that the Greeks-China Belt and Road Cooperation can expand on these two? 
on, on making a greener economy and a digital transformation? Uh, over 60%, as you said, uh, of Greece 2.0 plans uh, recovery funds uh, will be invested in their projects of green transition and the digital economy, which is very si significant to Greece's future industrial structure and the driver of economic development. So green transition and the digital economy are also important parts of the BRI uh, between China and the relevant countries. So the BRI is highly compatible with the green, uh, Greece uh, 2.0 plan, uh, plan mm -hmm. key areas of investment, so which creates vast opportunities uh, for our two countries to seek greater synergy between our development strategies and achieve common uh, development. So uh, our two sides have already laid sound foundation uh, for this cooperation in the area of energy transition and the green development. Mm -hmm. So investment of China's Costco shipping has transformed and upgraded the perilous port setting an example of green infrastructure, uh, infrastructure connectivity. So the State Grid Corporation of China is a strategic investor of Admir, the Crate uh, Pepper, uh, the Pepper uh, Peloponnese, the Crate Peloponnese Grid Interconnectivity Project, which is developed by these two corporations has been already put into commercial operation. So this project provides stable and reliable uh, electricity for Greece. So Chinese companies have also actively uh, participated in uh, Greece uh, photovoltaic and CSP projects. Regarding digital uh, economy uh, cooperation, the seeds for the future project or program of Huawei helps Greece to cultivate uh, the ICT talents. So there are huge potential for China and Greece to strengthen cooperation in the digital uh, economy. We would explore uh, the possibilities of uh, the cooperation in areas uh, such as e-commerce and internet infrastructure. I hope the Greek side uh, could maintain its strategic uh, determinants and advance the bilateral cooperation with confidence while ignoring the external interference and uh, uh, obstructions. It's not very easy, Your Excellency, to ignore very, um, very often the, being part of Eurozone has its benefits but its obligations. I understand what you're speaking about, and I hope it will be able to accommodate such external voices. Uh, should I ask you, uh, your uh, Secretary General, Mr. Smirli, you spoke earlier of red tape and bureaucracy and uh, things that have to be smoothened out, not only for investments, but for trade. What are the, many, the main issues that you would like to, to be addressed? If you were to ask something from the China uh, side now, what, would, be, what would, would that be? It's not just uh, one thing that it should be done. The thing is to create the appropriate procedures in order for any kind of product of good that we are sending to China, then to have a, a pilot that, w that we follow. And of course, as I told you before, it's not that uh, there are obstacles that are coming because they don't want the, the, the Greek products. It is two totally different systems. And... Uh, as we do the same in order for something to come in, in Europe, you have some standards that they should follow, some procedures that should follow. So, uh, for example, there is uh, Krokos Kozanis, which is uh, something that is in the market of China for many years now, but it is like a medicine. And it's not only a medicine, mm -hmm. it is also uh, a product that you can eat. So in order to change the category on that, uh, it was a huge procedure uh, that uh, at the beginning was not uh, even possible to change it. And now, 
uh, after uh, we, we found the solution with uh, Ambas His Excellency the Ambassador, uh, the next month it will be solved. It took us six months, but this is a pilot on which we can uh, work uh, on in order to, to, uh, to solve these problems. And I must tell you that uh, already uh, there are a lot of Greek products that uh, the Chinese market is asking to, to be there. And this is a pressure that is coming from the Chinese market for the Greek products. So we take advantage of this. I'm telling this in a good way. And, uh, I, must, uh, and I must tell you that even that uh, from other, other countries that have similar products, things are not being solved uh, with the same path. Uh, for Greece, it, it is, it is uh, still working. And of course, this is something that is based, as I told you, in traditional relations, because I just want to say one, one number about the relations of Greece and, uh, and China. You know that uh, Greece uh, has, a, a big, uh, uh, has a lot of ship owners. Do you know that from 2000, the last 20 years, there were built 1,000 Greek ships in the shipyards in China, and uh, it was invested 53 billion euro. So this shows how we can work together and how this is a win-win situation for both countries. It's not only for us. So Costco is important for us in the Greek uh, uh, port Piraeus, but also the cooperation with the, ship, the Greek ship owners, it's important also for China. So, uh, and it is important to keep the good cooperation also on this side, because this is the way that we will bring the products from the one si side to another. So there are two different procedures that we follow. And I must tell you that uh, uh, for Greece, it is a priority to have this uh, uh, cooperation with China. It is one of, of, of the country targets that we have of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, at the extroversion part of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and of the country. Shipping is, uh, Greek shipping and Chinese uh, shipbuilding is obviously neglected. They are the two most uh, powerful nations, ship-owning nations in the world, China and Greece. They have both, I think, overtake the Japanese. And other, uh, other such as Korea or Germany are far, far behind. Um, obviously, shipping has been uh, instrumental of developing the relation in the past decades and some of the of the initial Greek investments in China for building ships helped create part of, of the know-how. Um, that's our Greek uh, uh, read, read, read of, the, of this story. But um, Costco shipping investment in, in Piraeus has, because of its size and its position and its importance and, and its trajectory, growth trajectory, has overshadowed in the public opinion the, the shipping part. Um, so I would like to again turn uh, to the chairman of the Piraeus Port Authority and ask him that despite all these achievements that you very well described and um, they, are, they are verified independently about job creation, um, revenue streams to the Greek government and social security funds, etc., etc., it's very often that we hear some reactions from what we uh, say dynamic minority, sometimes we call them, and, um, or embedded interests, others call them, but also from some uh, genuine, uh, genuine voices that there's, no, there's not as much value um, spread, at least not as much as they expected from this investment. Um, would you like to comment on this, sir, please? Okay, thank you. Uh, you know that uh, Costco shipping or part of the period, so we always uh, pay more attention to all of the opinions which the society mentioned in, in our uh, period sport operations. And uh, we will always promote our promote our port of Piraeus in the split of the uh, both benefit for all of the stakes and also for the Greek societies. So we always respect all of the opinion from the all field of the society and uh, also showcasing of our good intention and also admiration of the Greek peoples, Greek countries, and Greek histories. Secondly, that we always put the cooperations uh, 
social responsibility as our priorities of our companies. So we're always doing a lot of social responsibility to all the field of the, also the besides the cities of the municipals. So we also, you know, with our development of our economicers, and we give the every year concession fees about, uh, this year is about 5.5 million to the local community cities. So I think that uh, such kind of the concession fees will be increasing year by year. Secondly, that uh, we think that the environmental of the port is the very most uh, important issues for the local society and also for the ports of Pirios. So right now we already get all of the ISO 9001 for the environmental certificator and also to get the echo ports certificator in 2021. So I think that Pirios port will always focusing on the environmental improvement and to make the, all of the mandatory enforcement in comply with the environmental protections in the field. Last, I think that uh, because of, the, uh, of, of our very good cooperation and the economic development, that uh, all of the society already saw our benefit for the to create it in the Greek society and the Greek government and the Greek peoples. Up till now, we already got the benefit in the top in the history of the ports which we, which the Costco shippings take over. So also we make the distributor the dividend by the 0 0.63 euros per share in the, in the market. So it would be very benefits for the, all of the Hellenic funds, all of the organization investors, and also for the society of the, of the uh, ports and, uh, and uh, cities. So I, in the last, I think that uh, we will, year over year, we will strengthen uh, our financial positions in the company, creating the multiple benefits and the employee, uh, employment rates of the local and also for the national company. The Port of Pirios already set up the very good strategical frame and also based on this strategical frame to make the good excursion. So I think that uh, through the very good cooperation between the two countries and also very successful cooperations between the two countries' people, we have achieved a very common road map at the perfect interplay and the full utilization of the advantage, advantage that we each party that we were to offer. So I think the Pirios port have, will be, have a very good futures and also good benefits to our local society. You're very clear. Thank you, sir, for your uh, reply to this, son, uh, this question. Um, Mrs. Lee. What areas and sectors back of China would like to render financial support henceforth from now on in the future? I mean, digital projects, green projects, I'm, I'm coming again and again at the same um, issue because obviously financing is a, is a very important thing, especially in Greece. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, we are in Greece now. I think Greece has achieved significant economic progress uh, these several years, even during the pandemic situation. And in, uh, the country's effort uh, have been recognized 
by the global investment community. The Bank of China is one of them. Yeah. And Bank of China believes that the country is expected to boost the growth of its economy in the future. So we will involve in that. Uh, I think the, com the Greek company, uh, Greek companies will in increase their activities, and Chinese will, uh, the Chinese companies will invest more in Greek as well. And Bank of China will follow the companies, the yeah, the, the business. And also, we think uh, here in Greece, uh, energy is, I think, especially green energy, infrastructure, shipping, healthcare, um, and I think also agriculture. Mm. Uh, a lot of issues, IT and, and IT sectors, uh, a lot of industry will booming. And then Bank of China will be involved in that. That's very promising, Mrs. Lee, and thank you uh, for your answer. Um, your Excellency, if I may go to the more, um, to see the forest, as they say, and this is a question that might, uh, you might also want to answer, uh, Mr. Yu. The Ukrainian crisis has increased geopolitical risks as perceived by businesses and, and uh, country leaders. This has given a rise to the, uh, an argument the pandemic did a, a large part for that, um, for, to that end too, that the global supply chain is disrupted and maybe we should have production of main things closer to home or find alternatives. Do you think this jeopardizes the, um, the Belt and Road Initiative and as such might jeopardize the Greek-Chinese economic relation? Earlier in the, in the day, there was a panel here about democracy, populism, and the globalization. And some argue that we might have less globalization. We might, it will not stop, but we might have less. Do you perceive this as a risk? So uh, this is what we do not want to see. So I guess the backdrop of the uh, globalization headwinds the Ukraine crisis and the massive sanctions uh, imposed on Russia strike another blow to the global industry and, uh, and the supply chains. So on April 1st, when I met him with the uh, European Council President, uh, Charles Michel, and the European Commissioner, President uh, von der Leyen, President Xi Jinping pointed out that uh, China and the EU should offset uncertainties in the international landscape with the stability of China-EU relations. Mm -hmm. Deepen economic globalization through open cooperation and address <coughs> the global challenges through solidarity and collaborations. So China and the EU, uh, as well as the international community, should promote peace talks, preventing this regional conflict from uh, deteriorating or affecting the wider areas. So, and we should not allow attempts uh, to politicize or weaponize the world economy or use the world economy as a tool for such attempts will trigger serious crises in global finance, trade, energy, food, and industrial and uh, uh, supply chains. So we oppose that China and the EU should jointly oppose the unilateralism and the protectionism and uh, uh, steer to the free trade and the multilateralism. So. Thank you, sir. We have less than a minute left. And if all of you, I don't know whether Mr. Uh, Mr. Yu, would you like to answer the same question? No, I don't have a question. But I think that uh, because of the pandemic and then the periods, because of the very good locations in the okay. logistic chains, so it would be much better to attract more cargoes and to be the harbors for the, for the East and the, and the Middle Europe. 
I would like a, a short closing remark from uh, Secretary General for International Economic Affairs, Mr. Smirlis. What I have understood so far from this cooperation is bigger problems, structural problems in, let's say, high politics might exist, but economic cooperation is working, is penetrating the relations, and it's benefiting both our countries. Um, this is a good way, functionalism, it's the theory of international relations, might work to solve even bigger problems, like the ones we talked about earlier. Would you like to comment? You know that economic diplomacy is uh, a big part of uh, the international affairs anymore, so uh, that's how we invest for our future. And I must tell you that uh, for China in 2022, in the National Plan of Extroversion, we have 36 uh, planned actions that have to do with tourism, have to do with uh, investments, have to do with trade, bilaterally, multilaterally. And I want also to tell you that our world changed the last, uh, changed the last uh, weeks uh, after this invasion in, uh, in Ukraine. And of course, this means that economic diplomacy is having an even more important role because these are the relations that now are the critical ones if we are going to, 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 to have all the goods that we need uh, for, for, for our society, for our people. So maybe globalization is a question for now, but regionalization maybe it is an answer. But of course, with always having global play players present, it is uh, our duty to find ways to avoid, uh, destroy, uh, to, to have our society destroyed from this new crisis that is coming. So on that, uh, our economic diplomacy, our plans for extroversion, our actions are really crucial for the next months and of course for the future of our people. I understand the commitment is mutual from both sides. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ambassador, dear sirs, madam, thank you very much. Thank you for watching us. Thank you.